Well, welcome to the sixth screencast in our series here on the digital publishing suite or DPS tools inside of Adobe InDesign. In this one, we're going to talk a little bit about creating interactive buttons. So to begin, let's go ahead and create a new digital publishing document. And as always, I'll go ahead and set this up for a horizontal orientation for an iPad. And for this one, I've got an image here uh, from a famous painting of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And so for this particular uh, article, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of play, you know, history professor and kind of say, okay, you know, wouldn't it be great if we had a uh, historical scene like this? And we've got obviously all these different individuals in the room, and maybe we want to have or create some sort of a presentation to, uh, to allow the students to be able to see who each individual in the room actually is. So to do this, we'll create some sort of a, a button uh, that will be next to certain individuals, like say, you know, Benjamin Franklin or Thomas Jefferson or John Adams. And when you click on it, it actually displays the name of the individual. So that's sort of the interactive content that we're gonna go with as far as this particular screencast. So to get started, I'll go ahead and drag this painting into InDesign and create a frame for this and go ahead and fill that proportionally. So that's done. The next step is I actually want to create uh, a button that when you actually press on it actually shows visually that there's there's more content. So let's say we'll create a, a circular button with a plus sign in it. And when you tap on that, maybe that button turns to a negative sign and displays the actual text for the or the name in this case of the actual uh, signer of the declaration. So to get started, a couple things we need to think about how we're going to do this. Now, in previous screencasts, when I created buttons, I created faux buttons, fake buttons. They really didn't do anything. They didn't change state from one, you know, the play button didn't turn into a pause button after it started playing the music and so on and so forth. And those are very basic examples just to kind of introduce you to how these various things work. But let's, let's go ahead and let's graduate up a little bit and let's move on to creating actually interactive buttons and buttons that actually do multiple things. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create... Um, an interactive element, a button, that when we click on it, it will actually change an object state. Now, if you watched the uh, the fifth presentation or the fifth, the fifth screencast that I did on this, we created a slideshow. And in creating a slideshow, what we did is we went into object states and we created an object state. Now, that was based on stacking a lot of images on top of each other. And each one of those images, of course, were part of a slideshow. What we're going to do here is we're going to create a custom object state. And the custom object state is going to, going to be made up of a couple different parts. The first object state, and if you remember, object states mean that you're only going to see one visual element at one time. So the first object state is going to be our button that has the plus sign on it. The second object state, we're going to use reuse that same button, but we're going to make it a minus sign. So in this case, that when we show the first state, we're going to see a little plus sign. And when we click on this interactive button that we'll create later, this object state will switch to the second state and will show a negative sign, meaning that it's already been triggered. At the same point, at the same time, excuse me, on the second state, we're also going to include the name of the signer. So to show you how to set this up, I'm going to go ahead and just like what we did with the, uh, the previous screencast, I'm going to create the graphics for these buttons. So I'm going to come in here and let me go ahead and zoom in. You know, I don't like looking. There we go, that's better. Let's go ahead and create a button. I'm just gonna use uh, Benjamin Franklin as an example. So let's go ahead and create a little button here and I'm gonna make something that's probably around, say 36 by 36. Once again, just following some basic human interface guidelines. You wanna make a button big enough so that you know your fat finger can actually press on it. You don't have a precision pointing device like a mouse to work with here, so give it some, give it some space. So 36 pixels is probably the bare minimum that you wanna go into. All right, so then I'm going to create a little button here. And of course, I'm not worrying about design at this point. I'm just trying to get this done. So that works out well. Uh, then I can, let's see, I'll just use the, the line tool for this. And I'll just create a line. Oh, let's see. Let's make it four pixels, and I'll give it a black. Actually, we'll make it red. <clears throat> there we go. And we'll just duplicate that and turn it 
on its end, and now I've got a button that has a plus sign. Okay, pretty straightforward. All right, so what I want to do now is I actually want to select just the circle and the two strokes, the two lines that I've created to make the plus sign. And I'm going to group these together. So group them together like that. And now I want to turn this into an object state. So it's very important to make sure that you, you group the items together that you want to be on a single state. If I didn't do this, what will end up happening is it will create an object state out of each of these three parts. Object state one will be the circle, object state two will be the horizontal line, and object state three will be the vertical line. I don't want that. I want all three of these items to be on one object state, so I need to group them together first. So I've done that. So now I'm going to go over here to object states, click new object state, and there we go. Now, the thing about object states is that if you only have one object or one item selected when you create an object state, object states require more than one state. It says right in the name, it says states. So it'll create an object state one and object state two, and they'll basically be carbon copies of each other. And that's fine for our purposes. So, so now if you see here, I've got two object states, state one and state two are exactly the same. Well, what I want to do is I want to change this state two. So select state two in your object state window, and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to double click on this, and I just want to get rid of that vertical line. So then now when I click on this, object state one is a plus sign, object state two is the minus sign. So all I did once again was just select object state two in the menu, double click on this so I'm editing the group at that point, and I'm just removing the vertical line. Now of course that's only going to affect state two, it's not going to affect state one. So that works out well, so now at least I have the visual part of the button done. The next thing I want to do is I actually want to also show the text, I want to show the, uh, the name Benjamin Franklin when somebody actually taps on this button. And I'm going to put that in object state 2. So to get this done is I'm going to come over here and grab my type tool and I'm just going to grab and create a text frame here and I'll type Benjamin Franklin and we'll style this. We'll say white Oh, let's not use Men in Pro. Let's use. Oh, it's just a demo. That works. So that this is Benjamin Franklin. I want to put it somewhere where I can actually see him. Okay. It's again not really worried about design. All right. So that works out well. So, but but the problem here is is that I actually want it to be part of this second state. So I don't want it to show up while the plus sign is still on there. I want it to only show up when the second state is active. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select my text that I've now created and I'm going to go up to edit and I'm going to hit cut. Okay, Not delete but cut so now it's in the clipboard. I'm going to select my object state, make sure I'm on object state 2 and if I right click on object state 2, I have the option to paste whatever's in the clipboard into that state. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. If you notice, it goes ahead and pastes it right in the middle. So let's go ahead and readjust the, space, the, the position here of the text. So there we go. So now object state 1 will be just the plus sign. Object state 2 will be the minus sign with the text Benjamin Franklin. Now, that's all well and good, but if we test this, nothing's going to happen because an object state's not interactive as far as being able to uh, be triggered by a, a tap or a click event. So what we need to do is, is that we need to now create a button. Now here's the problem with object states in DPS. Object states cannot also be buttons. In other words, you can either have a button or an object state. They can't be both. So <clears throat> that's a bit of a problem. But if you go back and take a look at how we dealt with the video and the audio, the solution should become clear. Essentially what we're going to do now is, is that we're going to create a button and we're going to overlay the button on top of this object state. Now both of these are overlays. Both of these will, will, uh, will actually be above any static text which is, of course will be flattened into the background. But as long as we arrange these elements properly and we put the, the button that we're about to create on top of this circular button that we've created, this object state that we've created, the effect will be the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a button and we're going to tell that button that we want it to change the object state. We don't want it when we tap on it, we want it to go to object state. We want it to be state 2 
instead of state one. And when we tap it on again, we want to tell it to go back to state one. But before we do that, we need to make sure that, especially if you're dealing with a graphic such as this, and you've got all of these men in here that you're going to need to actually create little buttons for, um, you're going to have a lot of buttons. And of course, the problem is, is that whenever you create a button and you create a, uh, an object state, it gives it the default name multi-state and then whichever number or iteration it happens to be. So this is number one. If I create another one, it'll be multi-state two. A third one will be multi-state three. It's not very descriptive. It doesn't really help us out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this Benjamin Franklin so that later on when I create a button, I know exactly which state I can tell the button that it needs to affect a change in. So that is helpful. So you always make sure you name your object states. All right, so now we need to create a button. Now, buttons can be made up of pretty much anything. Um, they can be made up of static text frames, um, shapes, uh, images that, you, that you've added, uh, obviously not object states. But what we're going to do is we're just going to use just a basic frame, uh, just a simple frame. So I'm going to create a square frame here. And I'm just going to place this frame right on top of where my button is. Now, a couple of things about buttons in InDesign. Buttons cannot be anything other than rectangular in shape. Now, you may be thinking over here, it's like, well, wait a minute. You know, I've got, I've got different types of shapes here. I could create, you know, hexagon or, or octagonal shapes, or I can create, you know, circular shapes. Surely the button is only going to work on the shape itself. No, the button is actually going to be the clickable area for the button is going to be the overall uh, bounding box or the frame itself. It, it's not going to be the shape. So if you don't want these edges right here, on the top left, you know, bottom right. If you don't want those little areas to be clickable, then what you need to do is you need to make sure you you basically shrink the size of this frame uh, into an area that you know the person's going to actually click on. So something like this, and then that way, the area outside of the circle is not going to be clickable. It's only going to be within this particular rectangle. So that's the only problem when you're dealing with with buttons in InDesign. But now I have my frame, I've got it sized and positioned exactly where I want it to be, and then I assume a someone's finger is going to actually press it. Now I need to actually turn it into a button. So with the frame selected, we're going to go over here to the Buttons and Forms window, which of course, once again, as I've done with all the other uh, screencasts, I'm in the Digital Publishing Workspace, so make sure you're in that workspace. If you're not, you can find it under Window, Interactive, buttons and forms. So in the buttons and forms, I want to actually choose that this is a button. And we can name this button. So I'll just call this Benjamin Frank or I'll just call this Franklin. Franklin button. And now what we need to do is we need to actually give it an action. What what's going to happen with this button? Well first off, what's what's the event the button is listening for? So in this case it's listening for when I release or tap on this particular frame. Now release basically means when I go with the mouse and I move my mouse cursor over this this square and I click and then release the mouse button. That's what release means. Tap of course is using your finger and you tap and that will actually trigger an action. But we don't have any actions currently triggering. So now we need to add one. So if we click the plus button you notice there are several different actions that you can add to any button. And the one that we want is down here under Swift EPUB only, which is actually a misnomer. Um, these last three, go to state, go to next state, and go to previous state, also work in DPS. Specifically, they actually trigger object states. So the one that we want to use is, is you may be tempted to use go to state. And go to state means is that when you tap on it, you're telling an object state exactly which one of the states you want it to display. Well, the problem with that is, is that if you add that action, every time you press it, it's always going to show the same state. It's not going to toggle back and forth. Well, we don't want to do that. If your object state only has two states, like ours does, the plus sign is state one, the name and the negative sign is state two, what we could do is we could say go to next state. And what that means is, is that when we tap on this button, 
it's going to tell our object state that whatever state you're on now, go to the next one. So in this case, it's on state one, so now go to state two. If it's on state two and I tap it again, it's going to go back to state one. So it basically tells it to toggle back and forth. Well, after I've added this action, it's going to ask me which object I want to target. And I only have one, but if you notice, because I've named my object state previously, it's easy to identify. Now, with that done, I could go ahead and test this. Now, you could test this a couple of different ways. And you could, of course, open up your folio overlay window and test it. You can open it up on the iPad and test it, which we will hear shortly. Or, because this is an interactive element and you're using buttons, if you look down here at the bottom, you can actually do a swift preview. So, if I click on this preview, I get the interactive interactivity preview, and if I press that, you'll notice, maybe a little hard to see, it works. That's pretty nice. Now, if you'll notice, the change is immediate when I click on this. However, I want to show you guys something, and that is if you go ahead and click on this object state that you have, so I'm clicking on my object state, and I go back to folio overlays, you'll notice the object state is currently being, uh, the behavior is currently being set as a slideshow, and that happens no matter what object state you create. The overlay will automatically create it as a slideshow, which means that's not really that big of a deal because all the options are turned off except for this crossfade, which means when I actually press that button and it changes states, it's going to initiate this crossfade, which is going to be a half a second crossfade, which may actually be a little bit too slow. So let's take a look and let's actually test this inside of the viewer. Now, if you notice previously when we did the interactive test, it was an immediate change. The crossfade wasn't there. Well, because that crossfade only is affected inside of DPS, and so therefore you're only going to be able to see it in the viewer app. So let's go ahead and preview this. Oh, there we go. We'll preview this on the desktop. There we go. Now let's take a look at that crossfade. See that crossfade? I don't know about you, but I think that's just a little bit too slow for me. So let's adjust it. So back here in InDesign, in the folio overlay, I'm going to go ahead and drop this to, say, an eighth of a second. And let's preview that on the desktop again. There we go. A little bit of a crossfade, but much more of an immediate response. And let's go ahead and test this on the iPad as well. There's the iPad. There we go. There we go. And that's it for creating buttons. Now, of course, there are a lot of different actions you can use for buttons. Uh, if you're creating interactive PDFs, for instance, you can use buttons to submit a PDF to a server. Uh, but here within DPS, buttons are very helpful to allow you to adjust any number of things. You can use buttons to, uh, just as we've done here, affect an object state. You can even create buttons to actually uh, move or navigate through an entire folio. So you could create a uh, menu, if you want, on your very first article and whatever button you tap on it'll actually go to that specific article or that specific page and we'll save those uh, specific functions for a later screencast but there you go a button for the next screencast we're going to talk about the web content overlay how do you actually get html content inside of dps so join us for that shortly